Should a French Polynesian cruise be on your travel bucket list? Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge. This is another of my tips for travelers. I'm going to tell you whether I think a French Polynesian cruise should be on your travel bucket list. I'm going to give you four good reasons why it should be and four key watchouts with a recommendation about what I think you should actually do. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what is French Polynesia. There are 118 islands spread across a vast area of over 1,200 miles, 2,000 kilometers in the South Pacific Ocean. Only 67 of those are inhabited. Tahiti is the biggest island, and over 70% of the entire population of French Polynesia live in Tahiti. Let's take a look at why you perhaps should have it on your travel bucket list. First of all, there is incredible scenery and the most magnificent ocean. The islands are absolutely stunning and they're all very different in their own right. Many of them are surrounded by reefs. The ocean, which can go from very shallow to very deep and be very varied, means that the ocean is incredible mixture of greens and blues and turquoises. They are absolutely stunning. Some of the islands are very mountainous, they're volcanic. They are just the most incredibly beautiful islands. It absolutely is one of the most beautiful parts of the world. Incredible scenery, beautiful islands, amazing ocean is definitely a good reason for it being on your bucket list. The second reason is it has a very interesting, diverse and different culture. Being so remote, being so isolated, it has its own distinct and unique peoples, culture, music, folklore. As you travel around the islands, you learn so much about the culture and the people, and it is very different and diverse. The clothes they wear, the architecture, the food, the jewelry, the handicrafts, so much is very different. And it is really exciting to go to a part of the world that has such a different culture and people. So people are incredibly friendly and very welcoming. So I think definitely the people and the culture and the fact that it's so different is a really good reason that it should be on your bucket list. The third reason that a French Polynesian cruise is worthy of consideration for being on your bucket list is the fact that there are 118 islands. So to get around the islands to see even a handful of islands, if you're not going on a cruise, is a real hassle. You have to fly, if you're coming in internationally, into Papeti Airport. That's the international airport. And from there, you either then have to catch ferries or other flights to go to the other islands. The advantage, of course, of going on a cruise is you can board the ship in Papeti, which is where the ships would normally depart from, certainly the Port Gargan. It started and ended in Papeti, so it's, you can get on the ship very easily, you can unpack and you can go around many, many islands without all the hassle of flying and ferries. You unpack once and you get around. So there are many islands to see and of course you wonder if you come to this region, see the many islands, because the islands are very different. They're not all the same. So you want to see more than one or two islands when you come here. So going on a cruise is absolutely the best way of seeing a representation of the islands. I think that's a really good reason for a cruise around French Polynesia being on the bucket list. The great thing about a cruise in French Polynesia is you then are given an enormous range of excursions. So let me talk about the sort of things that you can do as excursions off a cruise. Well, snorkeling and scuba diving is a big part of the region. And on all of the islands, there are great reefs and lots of snorkeling. So you'll find there are always many, many different options in terms of snorkeling and the ships have partnerships and know really where to go to get great snorkeling and of course, scuba diving as well. Depending on the time of year, you'll find there's an opportunity to go whale watching, which tends to be more into July. There's dolphin watching, and that's really, really popular. So you can go out on tours and view dolphins and whales. A really popular excursion is to go swimming with stingrays and also go to excursions where they feed the stingrays. This is really great fun. These animals are incredibly approachable, very calm and friendly, and really get excited with the feeding. It's a great excursion to do. There's lots of opportunities to go kayaking, paddle boarding, and all sorts of kind of water sport related activities. Some of the ships will even let you do them off the ship. So for example, on Port Gargan, they have a water sports platform, which in most of the ports, they will open up and you can go paddle boarding and kayaking right from the ship itself. A great advantage with cruising is you have it right there on the ship. You just go down to the water sports platform on Port Gargan and you can do all of those activities. You'll also find in all of the ports wave runners. So often they will head off 
around the whole island or big parts of the island. Many of them, if you're on a cruise, will also give you the opportunity to go zooming around the actual cruise ship itself. Wave Runner is really, really popular. Catamaran trips are also very popular. Many of those will go in the early evening at sunset. One of the things that French Polynesia is renowned for are incredible sunsets. So you'll often find there's many catamaran excursions that are sundowner related. In terms of land base, there are a couple of really great land based activities, one of which is cycling. So you'll find, particularly in some of the islands like Morea, for example, there's great cycling opportunities where you cycle through pineapple fields and then right up to big lookouts. The good news is, because these are pretty steep and difficult rides, is you'll find that most of them will also give you the opportunity of having an e-bike. So in Morea, for example, we hiked right up to the Belvedere viewpoint to look over the bays and we used e-bikes to get up there and it was really, really great. ATV tours are also really popular on all of the islands. Some of them are on-road, some of them off-road, and they are a great way of exploring, getting right into the hearts of the islands. So ATV tours, very popular as well. The other thing which the cruise lines offer, which I really liked and we used a lot, are day passes to some of the most exclusive resorts across French Polynesia. So for example, in Bora Bora, we got to go to the very prestigious five-star intercontinental Bora Bora Resort, where we were whisked across in a boat and we had access to the five-star facilities, the beaches, the pools, lunch included. And on all of the islands, there are resort passes included as excursions where you can go and see some of the most exclusive resorts and go to some of the most exclusive beaches across French Polynesia. So definitely the range and variety of excursions that you can do on a cruise ship very easily. If you go as an independent traveler, it's much more difficult to tap into the things to do. So there's a couple of really good reasons why a cruise around French Polynesia should be on your bucket list. However, there are a couple of watch outs which may influence your decision. So let me talk about the four big things that I think you need to be aware of before you put that cruise on your bucket list. French Polynesia is a long way away. You need to fly into Papeti in Tahiti. That's a good eight hours flight from Los Angeles. If you're coming from Europe, it's 21 hours. So we flew on Air Tahiti Nui, which was fantastic. They have brand new Boeing Dreamliners and it was a really comfortable and magnificent flight, but it is a long way to go. So bear in mind, as you put down your bucket list, you're traveling a long distance. So actually think about once you get here, how you're gonna make that an all round worth the while of the investment of flying all the way here. So what most people do is they do the cruise, but they'll also tag on some pre and post days land-based as well. The second watch out is when you start looking at the fares for the cruises, initially they will seem quite expensive. However, make sure that you really understand what's included. So on Paul Gauguin, for example, it was largely all inclusive. So all the accommodation, all the food, including specialty dining, all your drinks were included, all gratuities were included. So your only real major extras were Wi-Fi and excursions. So when you look at cruise fares, although they may look relatively expensive, make sure you understand what they include. They are much better value than you may think when you first look at the fares. It is a relatively expensive trip, but like many bucket lists, that's why they are on people's bucket lists. The next watch out is around the best time to go. And that in French Polynesia is really between June and August. It's between the mid twenties to thirties. You have the least amount of rain, so you have more chance to have blue skies. And it really is the absolute best time. I went on my cruise in June and we had a really, really great time. It wasn't too hot, the weather was great. My next watch out is if you're planning to go on a cruise around French Polynesia, think very carefully about who you go with. So some of the bigger cruise lines do come to French Polynesia. They tend to include French Polynesia or some of the islands as part of a bigger trip. What's really important is those cruise lines don't have ships that are specifically designed for French Polynesia. Because there's lots of reefs, it's quite difficult to get into some of the islands. So the bigger ships can only get into very few of the islands. However, if you go with a cruise line that is much more rooted and has ships designed for French Polynesia, you're likely to see a much more diverse and a bigger part of the region. So again, using the example of Paul Gauguin, their ship was 
really specifically designed for French Polynesia. So it has a very shallow draft, which means it can get into many of the islands. So it's able to navigate around some of the reefs that surround many of the islands, and it gives you a much more diverse and wider range of islands. So very importantly, as you look at which cruise line, think about one which is really designed and targeting the region because you're going to see more islands. So look at the range and diversity of islands that they're going to take you to. Cruising around French Polynesia for me was really a bucket list destination and it absolutely lived up to it. Should you have a cruise to French Polynesia on your bucket list? My view, absolutely. It's not the cheapest item you may have on your bucket list, but it's definitely going to be one of the most beautiful and most memorable. If you want to find out much more about cruising French Polynesia, Port Gauguin, or anything to do with cruising, I have many more videos about it, so why don't you watch another one right now? Mm -hmm.